Hello and welcome to another fantastic Dalton Trucking Training video. Today you'll be learning all about your braking systems and braking adjustments. In this video you will see what it takes to stop your 40 ton tractor trailer combination and what precautions you can take to ensure your braking system is within proper adjustment. Let's start off by learning what different types of braking systems you might see on your tractor trailer combination. Hi, welcome to the Dalton Parts Room where I'm going to show you the different types of brake canisters that we have in stock here at Dalton Trucking. Uh, the first one I'd like to show you is the uh, roto chamber. Now this is commonly found on our nine axle pieces of equipment. Uh, next thing I want to show you is a uh, Type 24 service chamber. Now it's given the name Type 24 is because it's the, the size of the actual chamber itself. We also stock Type 30s which would obviously be a little larger than this. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to show you the Type 3030 Maxi Can. Now notice it looks like that service chamber I just showed you, which it is, kind of. Now it's got the service chamber side to it, but it also has an emergency brake and parking brake side to it as well. Um, the service chamber side is repairable if you have a bad diaphragm, although the emergency brake and parking brake side is not repairable. Notice that the uh, clamp does not even come off at all. Uh, reason being is because it could be deadly if you take that apart. There's a very high pressured spring on the inside and it could come out and potentially kill you if you take that apart. Never take that apart. Now let's go ahead and look at what the inside of one of these Type 3030 Maxi Cans look like and how it works. In this demonstration you see the emergency brake which also serves as the parking brake. The emergency brake is a powerful spring that applies more than 25,000 pounds of pressure against the inside of a heavy steel brake drum. Since the drum is securely bolted to the rear axle, this spring prevents the truck from moving. It takes an opposing force provided by air pressure in the brake system to move the spring back away from the drum and keep it there as long as there is enough air pressure in the brake system. If the pressure is lost and the brakes fail during operation, the spring returns to its original position against the brake drum providing emergency braking. Now on the road, when the operator pushes the brake pedal, increased air pressure pushes the rod away from the chamber, causing it to push against a slack adjuster. While one end of the slack adjuster moves away from the brake chamber, the other one, called a camshaft, turns an S-shaped cam that's attached to the end of the shaft. As this S-cam turns, it forces two very thick brake pads or shoes apart and against the sidewall of the brake drum. This causes friction, which slows or stops the spinning wheels. Now we'll go to Al Leon, who will show you how to get out of a sticky situation. Well, today I'm going to show you how to cage a maxi can. In other words, your parking brake. Uh, let's say that you was going down the road and you lock, your brakes lock up. What happened is maybe one side of the, uh, your axle, the maxi can diaphragm failed. I'm going to show you how to get rolling again within minutes. On the maxi can you're going to find one side is sealed all the way around. That's for your safety. We've got to uh, cage it and what you're going to find is a caging bolt right here. That's this thing right here on top with a washer. You'll need a three-quarter wrench or a crescent will work just fine. You're going to take that nut off and washer. Yours is going to be all filled up with dirt, sand, and it's nothing that I can push out so easy as this. So what you're going to do is get a hammer or whatever else you can and tap that out. Uh, if you're afraid that you'll damage the end of it, put your nut back on just a little bit and you can tap it out through there. From there it's going to stay in that position, I'm very sure you're going to get it out here. Now you still got to get it out the rest of the way. Pulling it by hand is not going to work. What you do is get a wrench, any size, and you can clip it right to the T part. We're going exactly like that to shove it up and out. So what you do is put it there and continue on out till you have it out. Now this T part that you see up here at the bottom is what I'm calling it will be put in through the back. You may have a dust cover, remove it. You're going to put it down into the center and you're going to turn around clockwise. It'll fall in and you're going to pull on it out. 
and you're going to see it does not want to come out and that's excellent. That means you got it into the right little spot so we can pull it out. Washer on. You're going to put the nut back on. All this is turning clockwise. Then you're going to get on here and start turning it. You're going to be pulling back a large spring in here. Some of you have may seen exactly how that works. Now, I'm not bolted down and you're going to start turning it clockwise. And you're going to get it out about an inch. And the more that you are freeing it, the harder and harder it will get to. You'll have two hands on this thing trying to get that caging bolt back out here. If you get it out about an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch, you should be free. And then you'll be able to roll back home again. Drive safely. Thank you. Thank you, Al, for all that great information. Now remember, I wanted to point out to you guys, when you do cage a brake, as Al showed you, your service side is still working properly. The only thing that you have stopped from working is the emergency brake and the parking brake side of your maxi can. Now, remember, if you cage every single brake that's on your tractor and trailer combination, you will no longer have an emergency brake or parking brake. But, like I said, the service side is still working properly. Now let's go to Jay, who's going to show us how to adjust brakes. Hi, my name is Jay, and I am here to show you how to properly adjust your brakes. First, we want to start off with ensuring that our vehicle is on flat ground and that our tires are chalk to prevent an accidental roll. Second of all, we want to ensure that our, tra that our vehicle engine is off and that we are at maximum operating air pressure before you push in your red trailer valve to release your brakes. And third, we want to ensure that the keys are in your pocket to make sure that nobody is able to access your vehicle or possibly turn on the engine while you are underneath the trailer itself. Tools that you will need for this application will be your everyday flathead screwdriver, a regular pair of pliers, and a box end wrench like the 9 16th that I'm using for this application. Now that we have gone through the steps, we can go underneath our trailer to inspect all of our brake components. Now that we are under our trailer, we're going to do a visual inspection of all our brake components before we proceed with our brake adjustment. First of all, we want to look at our drum to ensure that there isn't any chunks missing any oval shapes that you can see with a visual eye or any cracks inside of the brake drum itself. Second, we want to go to our brake shoe itself. We want to make sure that the wear indicator isn't maxed out. We want to make sure that our rivets aren't lost or missing to ensure that there isn't any cracks and that we can't see any moisture on our brake lining. Next, we want to go to our springs. We want to ensure that we don't have any missing springs, there isn't any cracks or wears in our springs themselves. Then we want to proceed to look at our wheel seal to make sure that it's not weeping or bleeding or missing completely. Then we want to proceed over to our s can. We want to ensure that our inner and outer bushings don't have a maximum amount of wear. So we want to grab our s can, pull it to make sure that it isn't floating back and forth to ensure that our brakes apply properly. Then we want to go over to our air can and we want to check its bracket to make sure that it's sure to the axle. We want to check the locking nuts to make sure that they're down. Then we go to our push rod itself making sure that our clevis locking jam nut is down and locked into position. Cotter pin is present and that our slack adjuster is properly attached to the clevis. Again, we want to ensure that the S-CAM isn't missing any components. Everything is in place. Then we would go and proceed to check our airlines to make sure we don't have any chafing, any rubbing, any missing fittings, or any air leaks. 
Then we proceed to grab our S cam and we're going to check our free float. We don't want this to be any longer than an inch. From a half inch to a five eighths is proper. You can simply do this by grabbing your hand, pulling it, or applying a screwdriver and wedging it forward on its own. Now that we have done a visual inspection of all our brake components, we can proceed with the brake adjustment. Today I will be showing you how to adjust brakes on a manual type slack adjuster. If you have an automatic type slack adjuster, like the one that I'm holding, and it is not adjusting automatically, simply write it up and alert your shop so that they can repair accordingly. The way that we adjust a manual type slack adjuster is first of all we want to hit our drum to ensure that the brake shoe is off of the drum. Then we want to decompress our locking ring and tighten down our brake shoe to our drum. We want to hit it again to assure that the components are functioning properly. Then we want to proceed with the adjustment and give it a quarter to a half turn to assure proper brake adjustment. Then we want to ting our drum again to make sure that our brake shoe now has decompressed from our drum itself and to ensure that our locking ring is back in its proper operating position. Then we want to check free stroke to make sure that it is no more than one inch. We're looking for a half inch to five eighths of movement. Now that the adjustment is complete, it is now time to check the push rod travel with the brakes applied. Make sure that you keep in mind that you will need another person to help you to apply the brakes while you check the travel. Again, make sure that you still have the tractor key in your pocket before your helper enters the truck cab. What we are looking for is when the brakes are applied, there must not be more than two inches of travel in your push rod. Note that the shop has put a zip tie in to give us a point of measurement. Now that we are ready to take our measurement, we'll let the helper know inside the cab that we are ready. Okay, ready? Down! Release! Note here that we are perfectly good. We are at one inch, and that is perfect for this application of push rod travel. Thank you for watching this video. Turn in your completed test to either your dispatcher or the safety coordinator. Drive safe and have a good day.